we call the June 22nd, 2017 Regular Cattle Parish Commission hey. meeting in order at this time. Uh, Mr. Clark, we have the roll call. Yes, sir. Dominic, Johnson, Jackson, Lynn, Present. Bowman, Present. Cawthorn, Gage Present. Watts, Present. Middleton, Present. Atkins, Here. Chavez, Here, Smith, Here. Lewis Johnson. Present. We have a quorum, sir. We'll all stand. We'll let uh, Commissioner Lynn Hawthorne lead us on the pledge. Thereafter, we'll let uh, First Sergeant Lebet, if you will lead us in the pledge after the uh, after the prayer, sir. We will pray. You're going to do the prayer. Okay. He's going to do the pledge. The gracious eternal Father, we come to this evening with bow down and humble hearts. Yes, Lord, Father, Lord. we pray that you pledge your hedge of protection all around us and the inclement weather moves this way. We pray that every Father that the business discussed before this body will be discussed in a manner that's beneficial to the parish and to the city of Shreveport. We thank for every, we're grateful for everyone who's assembled today. In Christ Jesus' name, we offer this petition. Amen. 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 Everyone, take the flag. Put your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you for, I uh, appreciate everybody being here today. Um, do we have, I think we do have one as Agenda edition, is that correct, Mr. Clark? Yes, sir, we have one agenda edition. It's to expand the agenda to add ordinance number 5695 uh, and to put under um, final approval. Okay. Do I have a motion by so Mr. Second. Chavez Second. to add that to the agenda and have a second by Commissioner Lynn? Second. 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 Uh, I see no objection. We do have to open this. Do I have to open this up for for a public hearing. Uh, anybody? Is yes. There anybody sir. who wishes to uh, speak in favor or speak against this agenda edition? I see no one who wishes to speak in favor against this agenda edition. Can we now vote to uh, place this matter on the agenda? Can we go ahead and talk about it before? No, sir. No. no. You just okay. need to move to. Okay, that passes uh, 10 to 0. Uh, next item, Mr. Clark. Next, we move to citizen comments. Okay, um, citizens who wish to address the commission on any uh, issue other than zoning, please fill out a comment card located in the chamber <coughs> for you and return it to myself or the clerk of the commission. Individual comments are limited to three minutes. Uh, citizens who wish to address, I'm not going to read that, but. Uh, if you're here to talk about a matter on the public hearing, such as zoning, you'll be able to speak at that time. So um, we're going to go ahead and now our first person, who is First Sergeant, uh, help me out, Lebec, Lebec, uh, with the Count Lennon Youth Challenge Program. If you can come up, sir. If you can please give us your name. Uh, first Sergeant Joseph Lebec. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm First Sergeant Joseph Quebec. I'm the, uh, the commissioner, I'm sorry, I'm the commandant at the Youth Challenge Program at Camp Minden. Uh, it's a, a program for at-risk youth, 16, 17, 18 year old, both male and female. We're one of three camps, the other two being at Camp Beauregard, Pineville, and the other one, Gillis Long, and uh, Carville. It's a uh, it's, it's basically a five and a half month program in house and then a 12 month program uh, residential. What they do is they come to us, they learn respect for themselves, respect for others, and discipline. And uh, they also get physically fit while they're there. I promise you that. <laughs> um, and they also, uh, uh, they'll, they'll be in class five days a week from 8 to 3.30 in the afternoon. They, uh, a lot of them have the chance to get their high set, which is the old GED, and a lot of them do. Most of these students will increase in grade uh, between five and six grades. So the teachers we have, the instructors we have, are very good at their job. They all have uh, masters, I believe, in teaching. So, any questions? I think we have to wait. Uh, yeah, I think we all uh, 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 Say again? We can ask questions in another segment. We can't oh, okay. 
But please Thank you for your time. Stay around and uh, watch we will. Oh, we got to roll out at 16:30, but yeah. We will. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, Jim Galambos, and I apologize if Galambos. I'm Galambos. and I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Jim Galambos, Mayor Galambos, right? That's right. Yes. Oh yeah. He's the mayor. Right? Yes, sir. Right. Good afternoon. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to come address the commission. Uh, my name is Jim Galambus. Uh, I'm the mayor of the town of Blanchard. And the other day I watched the commission hearing and uh, noticed that Blanchard was mentioned a lot. Um, and the same with the uh, water study that was done by the commission in 2003. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to give you a little update as to what Blanchard has done since that, since that water study was done. Um, as you may not be aware, or you are aware, in 2012 Blanchard began construction of a $16 million water plant. Uh, this water plant was completed approximately three years ago, and uh, it has the capabilities of producing 50 million gallons of water a day. According to the district study, they recommended that we increase our capacity to 28 million per day. So we exceeded that recommendation. We currently serve almost 6,000 water customers in North Cattle Parish. <clears throat> Based on what we've done in Blanchard and what your water study has shown, Blanchard is ready to step up to the plate to meet the water needs of North Cattle Parish. There's a lot of uh, communities out there that depend on uh, well water and uh, during times of our drought have issues. Uh, Blanchard doesn't have that problem as we draw our water from surface water being Cattle Lake. Okay? With that, um, I'd like to tell you about some of the services that we do offer knowing that I've only got three minutes so for a politician that's a short well, time. Mayor, thank you. Um, I think we got some special circumstances for you. So oh, ahead. thank you. Um, with that, uh, you know, one thing that we like to do with our utility department, um, we like to continuously improve our customer service. Um, we, ex we have extended office hours in Blanchard. Um, we have, we currently are open from uh, 7, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, we also have a variety of payment methods available to our customers. We accept cash, credit cards, automatic bank drafts. We have a drop box available 24 seven. We have internet payments and we have telephone payments with credit cards. Along with customer service, the Blanchard utility system has a dedicated full-time employee for flushing our water lines. Uh, this is very important because when we get a customer complaint, usually about taste or odor or color or discoloration, flushing your water line for about 20 to 30 minutes will alleviate that issue and also clean the line out. So these are part of the things that we do to uh, improve our, our customer service and reduce our customer <coughs> complaints. Uh, Blanchard Utilities also does 99% of all their uh, water main repairs. We do it in-house. We ensure, this ensures that customer service is, is is uh, quick by minimizing the downtown that the customer is without water. Uh, we do water testing at our water plant every two hours to ensure a good, clean product. Time um, expires. Okay. Okay. And we test for five different uh, contaminants in the water. Also, uh, we test for chlorine, alkalinity, and lead and copper. Um, we have a constant investment in our infrastructure. Uh, just recently, we purchased uh, the remains of the East Cove water system, and uh, we were able to obtain a $450,000 uh, grant for that, which we started this week. We are going to be replacing their entire infrastructure, adding new water meters, and also fire hydrants to this area. This is the first time that they've had fire hydrants out there since they've been in existence. Uh, with that, uh, I'd just like to tell the commission that anytime the commission you know, North Cattle Parish has a water need, Blanchard can step up to the plate. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Mayor. And if you, Mayor, if you would stay around, probably got some questions for you at okay. the visit this section. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Lila L. Smith. My name is Lydia Smith. I live at 3444. You don't have to give you an 
I don't have to do that again today? You don't have to do your address. Just give your name. Oh, okay. I live in uh, Lakeview. And uh, I was here the other day. And I do want to, I want to straighten a couple of things out real quick. Uh, It was said at our meeting that when the first meeting came up that uh, uh, Mr. Johnson came out and told us that the uh, Blanchard people wanted to take us over. He said, we said, no. And then he said, we said, hell no. I'm telling you, we don't talk like that. And if y'all believe that we do, you are welcome to look at our minutes. And if that's not satisfactory to you, you may look at our tape that we take and judge for yourself. We don't talk like that. We treat our people with dignity and respect. I'm kind of like your mama. I come about and I tell you what I think, Mr. Bowman. She was a wonderful woman. Bless you. And I hope that I'm even just a fourth of what the woman she was. I just don't like the idea of people trying to trash us every time we turn around. The sewer company, every person that goes in there, they are trashing us up one side and down the other, and I don't understand why. And the people come to us and say, why are they trashing you? And I really don't know, except we broke a contract with them. Uh, Mr. Johnson did. He did come to one of our meetings, and he asked us to, told us it was a good idea for us to turn the water off on people if they didn't pay their sewer. We didn't really want to do that, but we did, didn't we? We did. And consequently, we did start turning people's water off because he assured us that he had our back. Then we had a lady come in, and she said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I paid them $100. And I said, what? And she said, I got a receipt right here. I said, uh, Mr. Harry Lowry said, turn the water on. I talked to Rebecca. I said, Rebecca, you don't take partial payments. When you take partial payments, it's over. That's our, that's what we do. And I worked in credit for 13 years with Best Jet Foods, if y'all all saw my resume, which I hope you did. And that's what the police department told me. You do not take partial payments. If you want to have a legal stand against somebody, you do not take partial payments. So therefore, we put you on a payout. And those people out there, and I'm going to run out of my time, and I'd, be, I'd just be grateful if you'd give me some more. But those people out there in Lakeview, they're elderly. We have many elderly people out there. And they can't afford to have their water rates raised again. Or, well, they didn't, excuse me, not again. We didn't raise it, but it's $1.76 or $1.67. They cannot afford to go and pay more. And then on top of what we've been told is that they are going to have to come in and make another deposit of $150 plus 20 And I'm here to tell you today, if that comes to pass, we that need, as Lakeview Water, before we're shut we're down, we need to go back and Second. give those people, everybody in Lakeview community, back their deposits. I'm, I, oh, thank yeah. you. you got three more minutes. We need to give every person out there in that community we need to give them back their deposits that they put down in faith because when you are no longer with Lakeview Community Waterworks, we cut a check and give you back your deposits. That's going to be a pretty good sized check. But we'll do it. And I'll tell you what, we sent out our letter. You know, they had their two little meetings. First meeting they had 20 people showed up. Second vote they had, 39 people showed up. Well, Mr. Johnson told us that if we didn't, if we voted down the the uh, going to Blanchard, he said he'd take it to the people. I told y'all that the other day, and he would see that they, you know, override us. But I did what he said he wanted done, and I sent out, we sent out 700 and some odd letters, and here they are. We've got probably 160 of them right here, and people are still bringing them in, and I'm going to turn them in here, and you are welcome to look at them. And they are people that do not want to go from like you. We have given our time, our efforts. I have given everything that I have. And I'm going to tell you today, if you put me off this board, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to walk out of here with my head high and my back straight because I know that I have done everything in my power for the last 
almost nine years to help protect and take care of the people in Lakeview. And I don't care what they say. He says people are calling him all the time about us, how bad our customer service is. Is it not his job to bring it to the board and say, look, we're having complaints on you and giving us a time to rectify it? But he doesn't. And he does not return calls. I've dealt with Lyndon before. He didn't return calls back then, and he doesn't return calls back now. And if he didn't want us on that board, Mary Kay and I, he should have said, get off. But if he can get three people on that board that he likes, they will have a quorum, and that board can vote us off. And I want to tell you right now, my time is running out. God bless every one of you for the job that you're doing. I thank you for your service. And more so, I thank you for allowing me, a little feisty woman, to get up here and tell you what I think. And you listen to what I have to say. And whatever you decide to do, I will accept it and walk away because I've done nothing wrong and I've given my all to this community and that's all you can ask me to do. I thank you and God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Who do you want me to give these to? Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have a Harry Lowry, and I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Harry Lowry, Lowry. Okay. I think I've said it now. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, Rebecca Davis. Rebecca Davis. Yeah. Everybody. I'm Rebecca Davis. I hope I can uh, talk to you all. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going in depth on a lot of these conversations. Um, I do have letters that were written to me and sent to me about problems that they are having with the Lakeview Water Department. Um, first of all, the serious lack of communication from the Lakeview Water Department to Caddo Sewer District 2 is very bad for our community. We need these two boards to communicate effectively for the good of the community. Regardless of who's in any seat, it's about the people that live out here and we need these two boards to communicate effectively for everybody's best interest. Um, in my personal opinion, the Lakeview Water Board needs revamping of its board members to bring new ideas to the community to help better serve them. Um, one of Mr. Lyndon Johnson's wishes is that the two boards get to know <coughs> each other better. He requested from us some time ago he would like one person from the sewer board to attend every one of the water board meetings and one member from the water board to attend every one of the sewer board meetings. That way we know what's going on between the two boards and we can better serve our community. But most of the time we are not felt welcome when we come into the supposedly open water board meetings a lot of times the doors are shut to us and we're not allowed to attend what's considered to be an open meeting as far as um, mr lyndon johnson and his not returning phone calls and text <coughs> that is not true in our case anytime that we've ever reached out to him from the sewer department he has been very quick to resolve any issues that we have in what I consider a very time effective manner. Um, I don't know if you want me to go over, I doubt I can do that in 50 seconds, um, some of the letters that I received today, but one of the problems that um, a person wrote to me today was that he, came, he wanted to move into the community um, put his deposit down at the house, put his, all his utility deposits down at the house, went to the water department to try to move in, only to be told that he had to pay the previous person's balance that was left on the house that he didn't even know. After quite a few t months of deliberations, that was never resolved and he was not allowed to move into our community because of this issue. Um, 
With only 10 seconds left, there's no time to go back over. Okay. Thank you. Um, another letter that I received is that the water bill uh, varies so much it's ridiculous. She said that she um, should have the same amount every month. There's only three people living in the household. It goes anywhere from $30 to $140. And then another letter I received um, in summary suggests that she wrote a check for $28.24. The bank um, shows it cleared. I mean, I'm sorry, the bank shows it not cleared. Lakeview Water shows it as clearing. So she's wondering what happened to the funds. Um, with that, I'll wrap up today. But I want to thank everybody for listening to us. Um, if, if you have any more questions of the Caddo Sewer District 2, we'd be glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I just ask for uh, context? Are you an employee of Caddo Sewer District on the board? I'm an employee of Caddo Sewer District 2. Okay. I'm also with the Lightview Community Association and a resident. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, James Gavin. Greetings, Colonel. <laughs> I'm James Gavin, uh, 3260 Lakewood Drive, Shreveport, 71107. I am the chairman of the board for the sewer district number two, and I've been there uh, almost three years. I was appointed by Commissioner Johnson, or nominated by Commissioner Johnson, and voted in by your good selves. Thank you very much. Um, when I was discussing this appointment with Commissioner Johnson, he made it clear that I was appointed for a term, and at the end of that term, we'd evaluate and see uh, if I continue or get someone else. Mr. Johnson likes to have diversity and uh, change in, uh, on the boards, give everybody in the community a chance to serve if they wish. I, uh, since we've uh, taken over the sewer district, uh, we've made improvements. Um, streamline the office, streamline procedures, and continuing to do things. Evidently in the past, there was some animosity between the water department and the sewer department. I don't know what it was. Frankly, I don't care. It was before my time, none of my business. Since we've been in charge of the sewer department, we tried to extend a hand of friendship. We tried to cooperate with the water department uh, for the benefit of the community. We've asked them two things. Uh, one was to let us know when new people move into the neighborhood. Um, we are kind of unique in that um, we charge a flat monthly fee for the sewage. It has nothing to do with the water. Whereas other places, as you know, water and sewer are combined. Um, so we've asked them to let us know when new people move into the neighborhood because they don't know that uh, they have to pay a sewer bill as well. Um, we <clears throat> had very, very little cooperation about that. Uh, we're missing revenue because of this. The other uh, agreement we asked for was a cutoff agreement in that uh, people, the water service would be cut off for non-payment of sewer bills. That, uh, after a long negotiation and many back and forth, that was finally agreed to and it lasted about a month. There was one woman that uh, complained to the water department. Uh, they arbitrarily turned the water back on, not listening to our side of the story, not even wanting to hear it. So uh, that, uh, of the two things that we've asked them to do, that's uh, the reaction we've gotten. Um, and lastly, I'd like to say nobody is indispensable. Everybody is replaceable, myself, everybody and uh, if I'm replaced anybody's replaced in about two years all they'll be is a story so that's my uh, talk. thank you very much thank you uh, Rhonda Gillum Rhonda Gillum oh, please come forward please come forward 
Okay. So, so can I make the recommendation to give my three minutes? No, ma'am. No, ma they'll have their three minutes. Okay. Yeah. To, if we, she's already spoken before. Well, I think we, we've been pretty liberal. In you want to speak on her behalf? So you want to speak on her behalf or say what No, I want her to her. speak for herself. Okay. Well, if okay. she has already spoken, then we, we extended everybody's time that's come forward. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Mary Kay Tallahan. Pronouncing it. Now. I'm sorry. <coughs> I apologize. Did you say Mary Mary Kay. Mary Kay. Mary Kay Talent. Uh, and I'm going to be brief t today. I j just heard that uh, from Rebecca that we lock our door when we have our meetings. That's not true. The outer door is open. There's an inner door going to the conference room. We put a bail up there after Commissioner Johnson told us to do that. But because a bail, a door bail, so they could bring it when we're all in the conference room for security reasons. <laughs> but I'm here to, uh, now, Christina How? Houston, the Lakeview uh, Waterworks manager, was nominated for the Office Person of the Year Award that is presented annually by the Louisiana Rural Works uh, Water Association. And they recognize office personnel who have gone above and beyond their duties and have provided excellent customer service. She and six others are competing for the, this prestigious award. Christina will be traveling to Lake Charles on July the 19th, at which time the award will be presented to the winner at a luncheon during their 2007 annual conference award ceremony. And I just wanted you to know about that because I think it's great that she got nominated and she's from Caddo Parish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> One we have in order is Kenneth Walter, is it Bruce? Bruce, yes sir. Come forward, sir. And this Miss Island will be next. suit and tie if I knew this was a really a courtroom. Uh, That's a, it's not a courtroom. You, it, don't worry about I, that. I don't, I, I don't always wear a suit and tie when I come in. So I, I, can you go ahead and give us your name? You have three yeah, minutes. Yes, sir. Kenneth, Kenneth Walter Bruce. Um, Mr. I Bruce, wasn't gonna, if you, Mr. Bruce, if you yes, could stand back just a little bit, they'll pick you up on. better. Thank you. Uh, Kenneth Walter Bruce. Uh, I wasn't going to do this after, after the gentleman prayed, but I want to say a quick prayer with these gentlemen behind me, young gentlemen. Okay. Dear, dear Lord, just forgive us of our sins. And if, if anybody's lost or don't know the Jesus, just repent of your sins and just feel sorry. You may, you may actually uh, make a mistake, but God will understand. And just ask him to save you. Yes, he will. In Jesus' name. Um, Thank you, Mr. I'm here on behalf of... Uh, the, the elderly people of Lakeview Subdivision. I'm worried about if, if Lada Smith gets kicked off the board that, you know, something will happen. You know, everybody knows her, they call her. Um, it, it's just a, you know, she just, I, I, know, I know she looks after the, I'm, you know, I know she looks after the elderly people. I'm just here for Lada and the elderly people. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> thank yes, you. Sir. Um, Ms. Deborah Allen. Hello, I'm Deborah Allen, and uh, I live in Mallard Bay, which is Caddo Parish, and it's part of the Lakeview community. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm against going with Blanchard Water. 
Um, it's not that I like Lakeview that much, because I think <laughs> our main problem is, is we got some hard-headed people that ain't talking to nobody. That's what I think it all amounts to. I don't have sewer. So I'm just telling y'all, I don't have sewer out there where we live. We live like in a little, whatever you want to call it, between the two bridges. I can't get sewer, okay? But I do have Lakeview water. Lakeview water has always been my water since day one. I didn't like it we were going to get the Blanchard water to start with. I wish we'd have stayed on Shreveport water. But that's just my opinion. But for us to say, I, I have a piece of paper here that says, my water rates are going to go up if we go to Blanchard Water. My water rate was just lower because I've been paying a higher rate for 17 years because I have a big meter. Like saying your car registered 50, you get pulled over for doing 55, but your speedometer says 120, you got to pay a 120 speeding ticket because your speedometer says it, but my meter says I could get a lot more water than what I did. But my water has gone down and I don't want it to go back up. And that's all I got to say. All right. Thank you. Uh, Paul Wood. Paul Wood. Uh, I'm not speaking on this issue. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wood. We're only speaking now. Uh, on the zoning issue. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, then it needs to be at this time because there is not a public hearing on zoning for okay, that case. Mr. Wood, you may want to come forward now. You need to come forward okay. this time. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, I'm Dr. Paul Wood. I live at 224 Gulf Ridge Drive. And the uh, P10-17 uh, uh, zoning issue is uh, on LB Road. Uh, and my house is right next to it. The, um, the design of the structure that the, um, first of all, to give you a little background here, um, the MPC has approved uh, B1 zoning with the construction of a business at this site that is to look residential in character. The problem that I have is in dealing with the architect and the developer, they seem to be steadfastly wanting to build a structure that to me looks like a strip mall. And an ordinance was prepared by Mr. Sweeney that stated that he has approval on this and it should look like residential in character because that's what the other uh, businesses and homes in that area look like. <coughs> that's the only comment I have to make. I just want that to, um, be sure it follows through that way if it's possible. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Dr. Wood, I'm sorry. Uh, Charlotte <laughs> Ballard. We don't have to say our address, right? No, you don't. Okay, Charlotte Ballard. Uh, first, I'd like to thank y'all for voting for the cameras. I just wish they would come up a little bit quicker than they are. <laughs> but my main reason for up here, uh, I understand the Alley Cats uh, organization is going to have a conference call Monday the 26th at 10 a.m. And I would love for y'all to participate uh, about the spaying and neutering of the uh, of the, uh, uh, the cats, the, uh, what is that, the, uh, the alley cats. <laughs> <laughs> What's the number? Uh, well, uh, we're gonna, we'll provide that for you after the thing. Oh, okay. Can, uh, right. Don't we right. have the information over there? Okay. All right. It's for the, you know, it's for the feral cat thing that we've been talking about. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you Miss Ballard. James A. Gillum. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, I represent uh, Lakeview Water Work District's uh, Water Department. Yes, we do have issues with communications between the Water Department 
and the sewer department were two separate entities. Uh, Lakeview Waterworks covers more than just the Lakeview community. A vote was taken to support annexation in the Blanchard water system, but only the people that were on the sewer <coughs> for that community were notified. So it really wasn't a fair voting. Uh, we're a small waterwork district that covers Lakeview as well as Mallard Bay, and I'll call the area Squirrel Point. Uh, and we hadn't had a lot of problems with people complaining about our services. Uh, we have a man that's on call 24 hours a day, call him at any time if we have a major interruption in the water services. The water's not going to change because we already purchased water from Blanche. So the quality of the water is not an issue. Uh, taking the price <coughs> up, revamping an entire community and system uh, is going to be costly for the people that we serve. And I would ask you, gentlemen, to give serious consideration of disbanding the Lakeview Waterwork District. Uh, yes, there are problems between sewer and waterworks, but those can be worked out when people communicate. Our doors aren't locked. For security purposes, yes, we have a buzzer so people can ring a bell. We start our meetings at five, if people aren't there, the door is locked. They ring a bell, we go and let them in. Uh, that is safety. We're dealing with seniors, as you met, Lida, <coughs> Mr. Harry, <coughs> Mary Kay. They're older folks. The last thing they need is someone walking in on them that can hurt them or cause injury. So that security buzzer there's a positive feature in that community uh, boardroom. Uh, we don't need to change. And I think if it was fairly done and everybody was communicated to as to what was going to happen with Blanchard Water and Lakeview Water, the people would support Lakeview Water. Uh, I think the vote with about 39, 37 to 39 people represented, uh, the vote was 18 to 19. That's not a <laughs> That's not a huge majority of people. And I think if it was better communicated rather than done underhanded where one side would sway it to themselves, allow everybody to know what was going on so that everybody could vote the way that they truly feel about the Waterwork District in Lakeview rather than just a one-sided vote for Blanchard. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Morris. Mary Morris. Okay. I believe, I believe Mary Morris. Mary Morris. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Erica, Erica's up here running me tonight. I was doing my Erica Bryan impression. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, look at you <laughs> with the jokes. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Morris. I live at 5368 Lakeview um, Lane. Uh, I can't even think. Lakeview Circle. No, it's not a circle. I know I'm coming off crazy, but I'm trying to remember my name. <laughs> you don't have to add your I'm, I'm an 84-year-old lady, so y'all forgive me if I get a little bit forgetful, but yes, this means a lot to me. I've been involved with, in fact, I'm a, a former president of the Lakeview Water Board. Okay. And um, I'm concerned about the things that are going on. It hasn't been good. And uh, I... Number one, I'm concerned about all of the reports that are supposed to be filed. Some of the things that have gone that I really have gone on that I really have some questions about. Um, there was a lady that worked there, and she was accused of embezzlement. As far as I know, that was never even looked into, and it's just been really bad for me personally. Uh, Mrs. Smith has a personal vendetta. And I, last December, now this was what, six, seven months ago, I went down and put up deposit for a water meter to go into my meter box. I bought the lot next door. I have the certificate the gentleman gave me. We, they say we don't do these anymore. But anyway, he gave me a certificate when I bought the lot. And 
there was water there. And so, and we took, even took pictures that I took down to the water board and showed my picture of my box sitting here. Been sitting there, whatever date this is, 89. And it took me six months to get a meter. And we, ha we had to go down to the water board and do this. We had to go down to the water board. And I was actually being um, put upon unnecessarily by a community system. And <coughs> I did finally get the meter in. I took a picture of it, took it down, went down, to met the committee, the board, two or three times, took a picture. And that here's my meter box, open, no meter. All I needed was a meter, as far as I knew. So six months later, I get called down. I was just getting ready to call Channel 12. I was so fed up. And uh, <laughs> anyway, they wanted me to come down. And uh, Mrs. Smith informed me that they had found a meter. Took six months to find a meter? I don't think so. So it's just a bunch of things going on, and I hate it that more people from the community would come forward because it's just been a horror. My fellow down the street, we were both flooded out last year, and uh, he has, I don't know why he isn't here. People don't like doing this. I don't like doing this. I, Mrs. Smith is a former friend of mine, and uh, we've been friends for years. And I've ad ad admired Harry. Harry has given up his time to help the community. But this needs, all needs to be looked into. It needs to be, I don't know if the commission is responsible, but it gets them their instructions. I mean, it's very, very loosely uh, taken care of, the business is. So I would just be all for going to Blanchard. I'm tired of fooling with it, and I have neighbors that are just, they just won't even talk about it hardly. They're just so upset. But I think we'll take a little time, if you can't make a decision today, take a little time and look to see what's really going on. And then, I don't have a problem with Blanchard Water. I just want to have water. I'd like to get my bill and pay it correctly every month. Don't never know what it's going to be. And I can bring them down here and show them. I mean, it's crazy. And I just, as I said, I respect those two pe as people, but this has nothing to do with personalities. And I would just like to see a change. And I hope that y'all will give me that today. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. Um, I have another one, but I think we can hold off until uh, a later point. Or did you want to come up, Ms. Roundtree? She talked earlier. Right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. Okay, we'll get on to that. I just wanted to make sure I acted. Did you want to come, Ms. Roundtree, now? Or you want to wait? No, I was waiting. Okay. That's it. Okay, we have no visitors. We move to special resolutions. Special resolution of recognition to Miss Mary Alice Roundtree. Please stand, everybody. Miss Roundtree, would you come to the front, please? Named by the authority of the Cattle Parish Commission, resolution of recognition to Mrs. Mary Alice Roundtree. Whereas the Cattle Parish Commission notes with regret that after 20 years of good, faithful, and productive service with the Cattle Council on Aging, Mary Alice Roundtree has now chosen to travel other paths and pursue the dreams of retirement. And whereas Ms. Roundtree has long played a major role in the activities of the Cattle Council on Aging. She has served since 1999 as Executive Director to the Cattle Council on Aging. During this time, Ms. Roundtree has worked tirelessly, tirelessly on Meals on Wheels, in-home services, foster grandparents, legal services, and senior center dining sites. And whereas Ms. Roundtree has, during this time, distinguished herself by displaying the highest standards of professionalism and integrity, she has enjoyed the friendship and esteem of a broad spectrum of citizens, including citizens in need, businessmen and women, local governments, and the education community. Her serious but sweet demeanor and cheerful willingness to help have endeared her to friends, clients, and colleagues alike. Her knowledge and acumen earned her the respect 
of those whom she served and whom she served with, and that service will be greatly missed. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission in legal and regular session convened 22nd day of June, 2017, that it does hereby heartily congratulate and commend Mrs. Mary Alice Roundtree upon the occasion of her retirement after 20 years of dedicated and meritorious service to Cattle Parish and for the difference she has made in the lives of those she touched for their service during those 20 years. Be it further resolved that the commission does wish for Ms. Roundtree and her family much happiness and contentment as she begins this chapter of her life as a, and as they enjoy in retirement the fruits of her labor. Signed, Stephen Jackson, President, Doug Dominic, Vice President, Lyndon Johnson, District 2. I met Ms. Roundtree uh, when I first got elected to the Cattle Parish Commission. And in meeting her, I just felt the good spirit that she had of helping people. Um, then during the 2015 flood, we had a situation in the MLK area where the Mills on Wheels program was transitioning and trying to make sure that they could service as many senior citizens that need meals as possible. In that, there was a little friction in the MLK area. And so what I did, I set up a meeting with Ms. Roundtree and, and her board, and we worked all the situations out. And now the uh, senior citizens are being taken care of just like they wanted to be taken care of and not really as an expense to the uh, CCOA. And with that, it was, it was an open mind on, on my side and open mind on this, this Roundtree side that we was trying to meet that middle road and get so that the senior citizens would be the ones that was going to be mostly impacted and they would get what they needed, which was a meal. And I want to thank her for that. And I want to thank each of you for everything that you have done over the 20 years. And uh, I'm so glad that y'all put there was a sweet demure because I, <laughs> I can get a little pushy when it comes to our senior citizens. But I want to say that over the 20 years, the Cattle Parish Commission has been extremely supportive of our seniors. And so I want to thank you for that. The funding goes up and down, but in your heart and in our heart, our hearts, we all know that we're always supporting the seniors. And I want to thank you for that very, very much, each and every one of you, and to the administration. It has been a pleasure working with you, by, by thing. It has just been a pleasure. And under your leadership, um, Dr. Wilson, because I've been through a lot of different le leaderships, so I want to say thank you for your professionalism and to everyone. And I'm delighted to introduce to you my successor, and I'm so excited. First of all, Doc Boys is a board member, and Doc's been with me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nobody ever kind of gets away from our board once they have done. Doc's well done. <laughs> <Right>, Doc's <laughs> been serving on and off in different capacities for probably over 16 years. And so we thank him so much, Doc, for your commission. He had to go off for a couple of years because of conflict of interest with the VA. And as soon as he retired from the VA, I said, well, it's time to come back on, you know. <laughs> and so thank you. And I'm very excited to introduce, this is Monica Wright, and she is the executive director-elect and in two weeks, she will take over on my position and I'm passing her baton. She has been the fiscal officer of the Cattle Council on Aging for 17 years. Oh, yeah. So you probably realize, and I know Randy and Erica looking at me, the, late, the money lady kind of runs the organization. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm kind of the cheerleader, but she has been a fabulous partner. And Monica has been absolutely incredible. We, for the last 20 years, and under Monica's leadership for 17 years, we have had a perfect audit. And we're extremely transparent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And each and every one citizen is always welcome to come and look at our books. And it's a wonderful feeling to be the executive director when you know that anybody can come and look at your books. And we do run a very efficient organization, and I'm proud of that. Monica knows the agency in and out. And so she is our new executive director, and I'm very proud of that. And I'm just so pleased about it. Monica, can you say hello to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> and y'all be real, real nice and give us some smiles because it's right. scary in front of you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mary Alice, for all the kind words. 
I want to thank everybody for all the support the commission has done for us the last years, the 17 years that I've been there and all the years before. I look forward to working with all of y'all and look forward to your support for anything that the seniors may need in Cattle Parish. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, hold tight for us. We got a couple people on the board. Uh, all of you. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Bowman. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. And I won't be long. I know it's a lot of other people, but I just want to tell you, you know, I knew you uh, before I even met you because my mother would always talk about you and you all were really good friends. And uh, yeah, I know you where your heart is with that. And so I also know the tireless work that you've done and you've been you would be sorely missed, but I'm glad that Miss Monica's here and, uh, and you've already been there. So now we just keep the torch lit. Um, I just want to also, when I think of you, I think of as a saying that says, and it's a song that says, if I can help someone along the way as I travel, then my living will not be in vain. And I think you've helped so many people along the way in this life. And so for that, I thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much. And thank right. you, Gerald. And, and uh, when I told Monica, thing, when I look at you, and we all remember Joyce Bowman. I would come up here and my legs would be shaking and Joyce would be looking at me like, go on, Maris, come on, say, say what you came to say. You come know? on, Maris, say what you want to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, come on, man. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, uh, appreciate y'all coming down today. I don't know if y'all remember, but I was on your board. Oh, well, we remember. Doc and Monica and Mary Alice, that's where I met y'all. And, uh, uh, of course, I think I had a conflict when I got on the commission and I had to get off the board, but it's a wonderful board. Uh, Mary Alice, we'll miss you. We love you. You've worked hard tirelessly for um, the community and the elderly in our area, and you'll be truly just missed. But we know you leave us in good hands like you always do. Monica, you know, we know you'll do a great job. And Doc, keep the board straight. Y'all keep working hard. Thank you for coming. Uh, hope to see you around. Thank you. And thank you, Doug, for letting me come up and bother you at the law office all the time. I can't remember what I was making you do, but I do remember your law office very well up on Free State, and we were disappointed to have you uh, come up. And Doc is going to be our board president for the next two years. All right. So we're excited. What, Doc? All right. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Gates. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roundtree. Thank you, Stone. For all of your service that you have given tirelessly for our community. I've had the privilege of being on both sides of the fence. My mother and my mother-in-law have both served as community service. Um, they have given the same things that you all have given, and that is for the seniors. I thank you so much for being pushy, as you said, <laughs> to make sure the seniors get what they need. You know, volunteers are very important in our community, and just to know that you have given so much is so worthy to be praised. Um, I've known Monica for quite some time, so she's not new, and we are looking forward to working with you as well to do everything that we can do through the Parish Commission and continue to make this program be all that it will be. So congratulations to all of you, and we will miss you, Ms. Roundtree. I know y'all will. I know you will. <laughs> and we'll still, I'm sure, we'll cross the paths again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Mr. Monica. Oh, really? Uh, congratulations. <coughs> Thank you for coming Good yesterday. Girl. I, had, I, had I known you was coming today, I wouldn't have made it yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, come on, you tell me. I told you I was going to be nice today. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to enjoy her ceremony uh, uh, <coughs> yesterday. It was a real good event. Had some excellent meatballs. But I've been familiar with what <laughs> counts on age and meals on wheels since I could walk. And uh, it's been such a staple in this community. And I just want to publicly tell you that you've done a great job with that and offer to come and do it to that program. So hats off to you <coughs> and to your board. And uh, congratulations to uh, Ms. Monica, who's gonna be taking your place. One thing you need to fill it in on, like you always, and I was surprised yesterday, you know, you always pitch it. So when you introduced me to her yesterday, she didn't make a pitch for fun <laughs> itself. She's gonna need. She's gonna need to every time she talk to a commissioner to make a pitch. Well, I know. Now, now, now I'll start. <laughs> she's <laughs> promised. She's promised, man. I said, now, Monica, you just have to get out there. And, uh, like and, we, and we turned in our, our request for funding. Just happened to bring it down today. Eric, <laughs> 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 I got you. I, got you. I hear you. <laughs> right. We appreciate you all coming down there. And, uh, without question, uh, we appreciate the work.
has its place. And I don't think anybody uh, in this town uh, will come down here and not know who Mary Alice Roundtree uh, is. So um, be passionate about what you do. You talk, you teach a, a younger generation to be passionate about an issue uh, which is hunger and uh, which is caring by elders. And oftentimes we forget that, that that is an important role that we have to play. And so uh, thank you for all your years of service and we look forward to working with you, Monica, uh, in your new role. And uh, Doc, it sounds like you quit one job to start volunteering for a job. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you didn't quit, you retired. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to be clear about that. You retired to work for free. So and we appreciate you and all the many hats that you wear and uh, the love that you guys spread throughout the community. <clears throat> so uh, keep up the great work. And, uh, we look forward to working with you guys uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those were so <laughs> many kind, kind words. Let us know if the grass is green on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I, I haven't been there, so I'll have to check that I believe that, that special, resolu <laughs> special <laughs> resolution passes by acclamation. Is that yes. correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Next. By the way, Doc is ours. If there's other board members that day, Doc <laughs> before, the, before the young men leave, uh, thank you guys for coming down. Before y'all leave, I know you got to uh, head back, um, but we're glad to see you guys come down and to be able to see how the local <laughs> governing process works. As you saw and was able to witness, we hear the good, the bad, the indifferent, and all those things. So uh, good luck to you guys and your endeavors and what you're going to do. Uh, I know a lot of folks have come through the program and become outstanding citizens, so don't be afraid of what the future has for you. Accept it head on and uh, take, take advantage of all the knowledge that you're getting now. And, uh, on behalf of everybody up here, good luck. Thank you. Come again. We'll Next, we need to adopt the regular session minutes from June eighth. So moved. moved by Commissioner Matthew Lynn, second by Commissioner Lynn Carthorn. Please vote. That passes unanimously. Next, we move to communiques and committee reports. Could we, could I make a motion to put this down to the bottom so I come back to That'd it? That'd be fine. And we just run through our agenda real quick. There's a motion by Commissioner Milton, I mean myself, second by Commissioner Milton. Uh, did anybody want to speak? Yeah, I've got one question. Down real quick. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that. Is Mr. Ward, where's he supposed to speak at? I'm the administrative report. Okay, so did you want to go ahead and do yours then? You want me to? I can't. Well, where, where, do we have an admin report in here? Well, it's under communication yeah, committee report. We need to go ahead and get him to do his well, admin. I'll, 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 Withdraw that at this time. Okay. So, okay. okay so we've got a community communication yeah. committee reports, administration response to information requests. Okay. Good afternoon, President Jackson, Commissioners. We did, we have a couple reports today per uh, commissioner's request. The first one was an update on the water system work we were doing recently. So, Mr. Kim Ward, would you give us an update on on how that project went and where we are now? Sure. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Wilson and commissioners. Uh, if you remember, I was back with you in March uh, earlier this year. We spoke about the, uh, the the big water study that we've been doing. I guess utility district study that, that we like to call it, Northwest Louisiana Utility District. Uh, since that time, you know, not a lot has actually happened. You know, I, I mentioned to you that that uh, we have several different ways we can go. We've looked at the uh, the, the five different options that they prevented that the, the study pre presented to us. Option number five was definitely the best kind of the best way to go. Looking at <coughs> The utilities splitting the district or the parish in half, trying to build a plant in the south part of the district, and then a lot utilize the existing systems in the north was kind of the best option that, that we felt to go at that time. But going forward from that, it was trying to, to, to just de determine how to make that option work. And one of the options is obviously to, for us to, to, to chip in about $50 million and build a plant uh, somewhere near the port and allow the, uh, the the water systems in the north to continue to. To, to continue, you know, serving each other and, and, and taking over the systems that don't want to be in. Uh, we have a system now currently Tyson Water with 28 customers way up north, and uh, they're wanting out of the water business, and we're trying to work with the town of uh, the community of Rodessa to, to take them over. So that's one of the options that we, and one of the things that we look at when it comes to communities and water systems working together. 
Uh, but there's, there's a lot of opportunities in the north for that, as well as in the <coughs> south. Uh, one of the other options to do with the water plan in the, in the, in the south would also be to look at uh, trying to find a firm that may come in, build a water plan on their own, and, and uh, uh, sell water in bulk to water systems in the south and also over in South Bossier. We've been approached by a couple firms who are willing to do that, but they're looking for some sort of a guarantee of about, about 3 million gallons of water a day. Only anybody with that type of, of quantity is the city of Shreveport. So we visited them a couple of times. Of course, they're, they're not interested in, in, in locking down 3 million. You know, they're in the <coughs> business themselves, and, 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 and from what I understand, they're becoming more efficient at it. So they're not in, in the, in the uh, uh, neighborhood of trying to buy or, or buy water from someone else. The only other option we have is looking at a possibly like a, a P3 type situation, a private public partnership where we actually bring some money and, and some tax and revenues and other type of situations to the table, try to attract the firm to come in and build a, a plant, obviously not selling up to 3 million gallons, but sell, maybe selling about a million gallons a day or maybe a little bit better uh, to the small communities in the south part of the parish. Um, we're still entertaining those offers. We, we, we talk all the time, or I, I should say I do, uh, trying to find who is the best firm to bring in to see what kind of options we have, especially looking at some of the federal guidelines. The uh, USDA has some programs out there. We meet with our federal delegates to talk about if there are options available. Uh, and then there's, there's some things looking down the line. Uh, the, uh, the Agriculture Department actually has some money, and they, they're just re redoing some of their redistricting here in Louisiana. They might might better to roll out some funding our way that way. So nothing's really changed on that aspect of it. We're just we're trying to, to figure out what the best piece is to, to, to go forward and uh, be be prepared when that happens to bring it back to you guys for, for some decisions. So at that time that's that's what I have. I'll be here for answering any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ken, yes, sir. how much money have we spent on this uh, utility? The, the, the parish of cattle, the, we spent about $600,000 total, but the parish of cattle spent about $450,000. The, uh, the, the Bossier Parish paid about $200,000 or a little under $200,000 for the, the study as well. It's, it's benefiting them. It's been benefiting the whole region. Uh, Bossier City has contributed uh, resources, and so has the city of Shreveport. So not financing, but just resources. Okay. Talk a little bit about the northern section, um, North Cattle Parish, North Cattle Parish yes, sir. and how the municipalities uh, basically has been the target of, of the water for the customers in that area? Okay. Uh, based on option five, the study produced five different options, and each one of the options was different. Like option number two actually suggested building a water plant in the Red River and, and serving the north part of the parish. But you know, in, in doing our due diligence, we realized that's not the smart thing to do. You have water systems like like the mayors, you know, in, in Blanchard, Oil City, Vivian, they're all in the water business. They do water well. But you also have got small communities like Tyson Water, Belle de Gil Water, um, Ida. You know, th those are small communities who struggle with water every day. And so the options are there for, and, and it makes sense, is not to build a water plant to serve these small communities, but it makes sense to, to find ways to get smaller communities to engage with, business, with, with, with communities who are in the water business, like a, like a Blanchard or, or Oil City or Vivian, and, and have them sell water or even take systems over if that's the case. It looks like in a lot of cases, the, the, like, like Ida and, and possibly even Rodessa, they don't want to get out of the business, they just want to buy bulk water from someone who can produce not groundwater, but surface water. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but our, our plan, which we think is the best option, based on uh, dollars and cents wise, is option five, which is utilizing Towns, uh, Old City, Vivian, and Blanchard to serve water to the communities, to, to North community. And so if a community such as, which I know Belle de Gil, uh, they would love to, right now they buy some water, they also have groundwater, and they have trouble with their groundwater. It's uh, Red River Alluvial. I speak with their president all the time about trying to, to work out a better agreement that they have with, with Old City to try to, to, to buy some more water from them. Uh, Tyson Water System, we're working with them, those 28 customers in Tyson, to try to get Rodessa to, to help out with, with that system as well. Uh, they're currently buying water from Rodessa, but they, you know, they, they, they want out of the water business. So we're trying to work with the smaller communities who want out of the water business and find them, you know, um, folks who are in the water business who want to stay in the water business. So that, that's, that's the northern part of our option five. 
Okay, and what would be some of the benefits of enforcing this, this study and making the study work? Well, I, I think the first step you have to do is realize it's going to be hard pressed when, when a water systems where they want to be in water business, you know, they're going to, they're going to do everything they can to stay in water business. Uh, but if you can find some who want to get out of the water business and, and merge them with someone who does, cost savings is definitely one of them. Uh, I can tell you from being a uh, president of a small rural water system myself, it's expensive to be in the water business. The regulations, they're constantly changing. We just had a USDA audit that was not only expensive, but all the hoops I have to jump through to make those those, those, those changes happen are not cheap and they're not easy. Whereas if I'm just you know out of the water business and having someone else provide the water, it's, it's easier. It's probably cheaper because now you can take somebody who has 6,000 customers and you're adding an extra couple hundred of them or a thousand to them, you're not seeing the, the benefit of scale is there. You, the, the amount of chemicals that someone who's buying who's got 6,000 customers is going to be you know, relatively less than someone who's, who has a thousand customers and they got to deal with that. So, and of course you're, you know, all the way down to the maintenance, to operation, to the to the administration of the water. <laughs> so basically cost savings to the end user. Well, to the end user as well as, if you remember, this water study started on one thing, trying to get off groundwater. You know, and so if a system is utilizing groundwater, we'd love to be able to see them getting off groundwater and moving to a uh, surface water type system, which is Cattle Lake. Uh, all those communities I've talked to that are in the water business, want to stay in the water business, utilize Cattle Lake. We have 100 million gallons a day possible usage out of it that belongs to, to Louisiana residents, preferably Cattle Parish, because it's in our, it's in our parish. So there's a gr vast amount of available water for those communities to use and get them off groundwater, which as we know, through time, through drought, it becomes less and less prevalent. Great. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lee. That is. Two days ago, I sent a letter to Mr. Hopkins and to Ken Ward and to President Jackson in reference to a natural resources committee meeting um, to go into great depth on another water treatment facility in South Caddo Parish. Um, I know that Caddo Parish and Bossier Parish partnered with this and originally it had included the city of Shreveport and the city of Bossier City. However, ultimately it was Caddo Parish and Bossier Parish that, that shouldered this financial uh, burden in moving forward. Um, and I think that a lot of the tough questions that, that we want to ask can be asked in that committee meeting. Um, and I was throwing that at, at Todd and Ken so that they can decide whether they wanted it or at our Monday meeting or our Thursday meeting afterwards, um, whichever, in case Ken Ward was out of town or needed to prepare something, I wanted to give ample opportunity to ramp up and then also give everybody around the horseshoe time to prepare their questions that they may have for Mr. Ward. That's it in reference to that. Thank you, Mr. Ward. I didn't have any questions. I just wanted to throw that in. And, uh, Commissioner Chavez. Mine was next up there for communique, so. Uh, 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 Ken, yes. uh, and I don't know. Whenever we get that set up, can we also discuss the one, I, the issue, the water issue out in South Street Port as well? Uh, is that all encompassed in? Uh, I think Commissioner yeah. Lynn's okay. uh, South South Water District is, okay. is what he has on, yes. on okay. mind. The, the North kind of is going to be able to take care of itself as long as we continue to massage, work with the small communities. Mm -hmm. We work with uh, Blanchard Oil City and Vivian, and we, you know, I know all the small communities up there through the through the study. Which, we'll, which I'll be honest, one of the best things from this study has been getting to you know the, the operators and understanding, you know, where they're at, what they sit, and communication. You know, it's it's great to be able to get a phone call from Mr. Jones, you know, with with uh, Rolling Hills Water or you know uh, Tyson Water System whenever we have issues in Rodessa as well. So those are all great. That's a great. Great aspect. My last question: Is those stripes the same color as the shirt? <laughs> I don't believe so. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I have to apologize. We've been fighting sandbags and that kind of stuff today, so this was trying to appreciate get this done. So thank you. you, you you've been doing oh, that'd be pretty suit. sharp. Oh, uh, this is just polo <laughs> shirt and, and jeans. <laughs> oh, that's a that's appreciate that's stealth okay. sharp. It is. Oh, it, is. Oh, oh, appreciate it. it is a sharp jacket, so. <laughs> 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 
with you. Yeah, <laughs> I moved on. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'd like for Key to give us an update on our sandbag efforts the last couple of days. Sure. Can you refresh on that, Ken? Sure, sure, no doubt. We started on Tuesday uh, afternoon. Uh, we fired up the uh, the gazillion giant as somebody through some email decided to call it. So we got the, the sandbagger machine running. It's the new one, right? The, yeah, the new one, yeah. Sure. Of course, we also run our our our, uh, our hand one as well off of off of a dump truck. If the uh, the guys decide to get, we try to sometimes pair them up and get them com in competition with each other. It's pretty fun to watch. But we started on on, on Tuesday. We ran six hours on Tuesday. Did fifteen hundred sandbags. We had them ready to go for for pickup for yesterday. We had pickup from yesterday from noon to uh, 3.30. Uh, we handed out, the original, yesterday we handed out approximately about 500 bags. It wasn't a lot. Um, what we did do yesterday, though, is we allowed the city of Shreveport to come out, and they ran it all day yesterday from, from sunup to, to 3 o'clock, and they came back about 6 and ran it to 5. They ran about 2,500 sandbags um, yesterday, shipped it out, and then they came back today and ran uh, till 3 today. Whereas we're we're running three o'clock on, our operations are open um, from this morning to seven o'clock, and we won't close until Cindy is long gone and in Tennessee somewhere tonight. And so we are open. We're we're going to continue making sandbags at a fast speed as that we can, and we'll stay open until we see the need for no longer, and we'll, and we'll close. Uh, our our camps are uh, available for trees. We do expect some 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 wind later this afternoon with the, the heavier rains. Uh, we've been out in preparation for any of the areas that we know that, that normally receive flooding. We've already been out looking at the ditches. We've walked Dixie Garden from one to an, into another and, and have a six inch pump set up ready in case that, that area decides to accumulate water a little more than we expect. So well, I think we've, you know, our crews have done an outstanding job being prepared, uh, being proactive, and uh, we'll be here for the long run. All right. Uh, I will attest, I was there this morning, and they are some lean, mean, sandbagging, machining people out there. And they, they had it going. Thank you. That's it. You had it, Jackie. I know. He was dirty. He was he was there bagging sand and working, and every everybody was shoveling extra sand into the machine and, and hauling it off, we and trucks it. were leaving and backing up. They were going to town. They, gotcha. they, I think they're going to have a backlog of Got stock you. sandbags. Commissioner Lennon does. What's the maximum of sandbags uh, a citizen can get? At any one time, 25. Uh, they're more than welcome to go and drop them off and come right back. Uh, we don't check IDs. We don't check where you're from. If you show up online, you're going to get 25. I just want to make sure that they know. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Gage, well. Good question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for getting the sandbags out so expeditiously. Start getting calls as soon as they made the announcement that we were expecting bad weather. And because I represent a lot of constituents in the area where there's known for flooding, we wanted to make sure that they would be able to get some sandbags. So thank you for all you're doing and to make sure that the job is done. I'll, let, I'll make sure I let our, our, our folks know. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Jackson, we have uh, an update on the. Uh, Voting precincts, the satellite situations that Commissioner uh, Watts wanted to know about. So, Ms. Frazier, we'll go ahead. Yes, we're waiting for some information from the Secretary of State's office. Um, as soon as they get back in touch with us, we should be able to get uh, to put together a step-by-step -step outline of all the steps needed to um, go ahead and get the extra uh, voting locations, early voting locations. Hey, Commissioner Watts, uh, you did ask me about the, uh, the cooperation between the city and uh, the Sheriff's Department. Yes. They did meet this week. Uh, Chief Crump did meet with Chef Crater, and they were working out details. So that's the extent of what we know right now. Okay. And we did contact the proper standards to street board about the Rite Aid store and lodge a complaint about that as well. Great. Thank you. Okay. So that concludes my report. Attorney uh, Frazier. Yeah. On that increasing uh, early voting precinct, uh, could you put it? Would, would that be a cost analysis with that? Um, yeah. Probably so, because yeah. there is a um, provision that states who has to pay for what percentage. So I believe the Secretary of State will um, help provide that. So, yes. Um, would that be a cost to the parents or a cost to the state? Both. Y'all predict that to be a six-figure number or five-figure number, four-figure number, three? 
we won't know until how until we know how many um, additional locations they are pulling. Well, I, I would like to request the administration to provide a cost comparison of what it would cost a projected cost comparison of what it would cost to adjust our meeting times by an hour to adding early voting uh, precincts throughout the parish. And so I would like to see something that lines the two up. Uh, I think they both are great efforts, but I would like to see something that compares and contrasts the cost analysis uh, of that. And I uh, appreciate you. Yeah, my last item is, uh, Mr. Uh, Jackson, I have a, a process flow chart for you on the Facebook Live. Okay. I'll give it to you. I can send a draft for right now. So when they get it done, I'll send it to you tomorrow through email. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Act. I, I want to follow up on the um, additional voting locations. Have, have you asked the Secretary of State to propose uh, X number of new locations, or uh, how many number of locations are we looking at? It will depend. Um, what they will do is request some numbers, I believe, from the Registrar of Voters and they will do an analysis on how many, based on population, they would approve. How many additional locations they would approve? Right. And then there would also be a discussion of where those locations would be, or is that? Correct. Yes. All right, thank you. That's it. Yes, thank you. Uh, tentatively, do y'all predict about a month before we know that, or y'all know that? Hopefully sooner, but um, within a month's time. Oh. All right. Appreciate it. So are we going to, we had a motion and a second, are we going to move the other communiques to the? Yes, if we could, if, if the body would indulge us and move our communiques, if the commissioner knows the second hold to just yes, move our communiques to the end. And that includes the president's report as well. Okay. Uh, is there any objection to moving that to the end? Second. Okay. All right, so well, that passed you now. <laughs> so we'll come back to our communiques and committee report. Next, we move to public hearing on ordinances, ordinance number 5701 of 2017, adopting volume two of code of ordinances relative to unified development code and zoning and subdivision generally repealing chapter 54 and certain sections of 48. So moved to adopt. No, it's, this is just public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak in favor of ordinance 5701 of 2017? Is there anybody here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5701 of 2017? I see no one, Mr. Burke. Okay. Next, we have uh, Ordinance 5702 for public hearing, authorizing the parish administrator to execute an easement and right of way agreement with AEP SWEPCO pertaining to the granting of temporary and permanent easement and right of way for purpose of constructing and maintaining an electrical utility line in sections 30 Township 20, North Range 15 West, Cattle Parish. Anyone here to speak in favor of Ordinance 5702 of 2017? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5702 of 2017? I see no one. Next, we move to ordinances for final passage. First, we have Ordinance Number 5695, amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Ellaby Road, 500 feet west of Golf Ridge Drive from RA Residential Agriculture District to B1 Buffer District with use approval to permit medical and allied services. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Chavez, second by Commissioner Atkins. Um, this is approving. That's the motion, yes sir. This right. is, yeah, this is one that was this added, added to the agenda. Oh, okay. Right. okay. <laughs> Uh, I know, I was saying the same thing because the numbers are off on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 thank you. Unless you didn't want to. That's good. No, as long as everybody's following it, we'll go ahead and move forward. Okay. That passes unanimously with one out. 11 0 1 out. Ordinance number 5701 of 2017. Ordinance number. Or adopting volume two of the code of ordinances relative to the unified development code. Move to adopt. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lennon Johnson, second by Commissioner Carthorne. Um Commissioner Folk on the board to join speak on the motion. No, not right. You want to speak on the no. uh, Commissioner Vice President now. Yeah, um, Henry, I got a couple yeah. questions. The the main one I had was when I'm looking at the documents, 
Um, the big issue I had was I wanted to make sure that if there was any changes to this ordinances whatsoever, that it got it was going to be approved by this cattle parish commissioners, this commission body. And, and I don't see anything redlined on that issue. The pages that I had given to Todd had the red line with the changes on it, and that would have been, that was distributed with the, the uh, agenda. Well, they're, they're on here, and I got all the red lines. I've read that. I don't see anything that says that any changes can go to the parish commission. I'm sorry. And, and actually, I need to step in and, and, and make one point. At this stage, procedurally, what the commission needs to do is refer those changes to the MPC because the MPC has not looked at those changes yet. And until the MPC considers those changes, the commission cannot adopt them and, and legally have it be in effect. But my question is, where is the language that I was asking to be put in there that said that if we wish to change this ordinance, we wish to make any amendments whatsoever, it gets to come to the Cattle Parish Commission. We got several different edited documents and they seem to kind of deal with the, the mobile home issues and places of worship and um, there it may be in there I just you're gonna have to point it out to me and tell me where it's at and your question was specifically with regard to amended yeah you remember there was an issue about if that ordinance ever had to be amended the way it was originally set up it had to go to a uh, little subcommittee to the you know the city street board and then there'd be a little subcommittee and we didn't want all that stuff I'm, I wanted I'm, 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 this, I'm tracking with you now if, if this if this has to be changed in any way shape okay. form and fashion then I don't want to have to deal with any committee I want it to be this body right here so right. I tried to figure out where that and is. and actually that did not that was a change that did not need to be made to what was introduced or the the UDC the whole the binder has already had that change made in other words, because the city has made that change as well, rather than going in and having to have that as a okay. further amendment. I'd like to see it. I mean, I'd like to see it in writing where it is that we're talking about. And then the other question was on the changes I had was uh, on the mobile home issue. Mm -hmm. It talked about uh, mobile homes uh, being destroyed or destruction, but I think we also talked about in the event that a mobile home just got old and someone needed to replace it that they could okay. could do so well that would be my fault because I, I understood the problem was if a mobile home was destroyed or burned by fire or somehow other damage which is the same situation with a permanent structure with a permanent structure if a house that or other structure that's non-conforming burns or is knocked down by a tornado the owner of that permanent structure can replace it and continue the legal non-conforming use. And so that was my understanding was you wanted mobile homes to be treated in that same manner. So that's that's what I wrote was to provide that mobile homes would be treated in the same manner as, as a permanent yeah, structure. Yeah, and that was in there, but I thought we talked about also, you know, if someone, you know, a mobile home got old and they needed to move it out, they could put one in, you know. Okay. Uh, that's, that's my fault then. We can, if you will, um, I guess we've got two choices. Uh, either uh, skip over this matter and give me a chance to put that language in there, or push this to the first meeting in July, and I'll give you that. <coughs> I mean, I, what I'm afraid is that, no, you saying. know, Commissioner Lynn's, well, and, 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 Commissioner <laughs> Lynn's got an uh, amendment good. too. I mean, I would like to see maybe someone to make good. a motion, you know, I don't know if it like passed, but to, to postpone it and let it go back to the rural committee. I think that we had talked about this UDC, however it passes, and it is an extremely important thing, and it may be better to have a, our own meeting on this just for this one issue, rather than taking up another hour to discuss these changes like we're doing now. So. And, and do that perhaps at the first meeting in July, and then uh, if we could do it time, if we could do it timely, then at that, uh, Thursday meeting because once again yeah, well, I think proce procedurally what you need to do is move to refer those changes to the MPC well, so that that's not what it says that. adopt it says adopt <laughs> volume so we're fixing here to adopt well, it but we the, can't do that I mean it needs to say refer it to the UDC so yeah 
my suggestion is we need to postpone this until we get all of our ducks in a row and maybe have a, another committee meeting with those red lines to make sure we know exactly what's in there. I'm through. Uh, Henry. Yes. So if, it, if we remand it back to the MPC for their review, would it come back to us yes. eventually anyway? Le legally, by state law, this is not a matter of ordinance, not a matter of right. charter. By state law, right. the MPC has to look at everything. Right. So these issues that, that we've raised here, the MPC has not looked at those. Right. And so until they have an opportunity to pass on those, then that legally cannot be adopted and put into effect by the commission. So they, they have pro they, they, I think we may be getting to what I was trying to say a couple of months ago. Tell me what stopped the MPC, what stopped this from okay. initiating at the MPC? Sorry. What stopped these changes from being initiated? Um, nothing. But until, but those changes that the commission says, we want to, we want to I make this they change. They would be acting on our request, is what I think he's saying. Uh, essentially, uh, by, by okay. and, and from that standpoint, it makes more sense that if the commission says, seven, you know, by a seven member, at least seven member vote, we want you to, NPC wants you to consider these, then it's going down with a little more authority because it's okay, seven commissioners would like you to look at this as opposed to one commissioner going to them and saying, right. would you please do this? Well, let me just hypothetically ask you, what happens if they don't agree to them? If, well, and if the NPC does not approve these changes, then it takes an eight vote it takes right. eight votes to adopt as opposed to seven. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Lee. Motion to postpone um, until our next win next uh, regular session meeting. Moved by Commissioner Lynn to postpone. Second by Commissioner Dominic to postpone. Uh, I see Commissioner Lee. I'd, I'd like to just speak on that just for a second. Um, rather than do what I was originally going to do, which was going to propose an amendment that everybody received an email and everybody received a hard copy that I was going to ask Henry to explain. If we can postpone it, then then we'll just let Mr. Bernstein make that explanation and I'll make my explanation to everybody as far as why I proposed this one change um, between now and the next regular session meeting. That's all. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think, we'll, you know, we'll, you know the, the rural community we're looking at it, but if everything looks out, looks okay, what's our next meeting, um, Todd? Well, we, we have a few items set on the, we meet on I'm the- to, I'm trying to do a committee meeting. Uh, we meet on the 3rd, I believe, right. Right. of July. Yeah, yeah work session's the 3rd. And, and we have a couple sessions. items already for that day. I think we have an expungement uh, meeting going on that takes two or three of our commissioners <coughs> out. And then we okay. have the- July 6th will be our next- That's meeting? the next- uh, so we can Regular session, have yes. a um, committee meeting with the rural committee meeting like we did before at 2 o'clock? You could, but you would not want to probably put this issue on that, that day for voting if you're just going to have a committee meeting that day. <clears throat> well, he's, when are you going to postpone it till? I just, I said until the next re regular session, which would be which two weeks Which is July 6th. Yeah, but I think, they, I think we kind of, the committee kind of needs to make, make sure we got all this stuff in the line. I don't think we're well, I can, that's, I can meet in two weeks. Can y'all meet in two weeks? <laughs> well, we can't. How about we do this? How about days. we just postpone? That's just postpone. Okay. Postpone this and, and vote. And then go, and then, we'll okay. so let's just postpone. I mean, so that's 14 days at least. We will remove the motion. date from it. Yeah. Who is what you're saying. The I was. Hey, well, did you second it? Yes. Just to just postpone. Then y'all figure out when y'all want to Okay. That'll take care of it. Let's vote on postpone it. Right, I, I'd oh, like I to, apologize. I'm so sorry. Uh, Commissioner Linda. Yeah, I was going to make a friendly uh, amendment to it to say August uh, because the next July meeting is early on. We don't want to meet once in July. So that would give the, the, the committee a chance to meet in July and then we can come back in August and, and have it back on the agenda. That's I'll good. accept that. That sounds good. All right. Uh, Commissioner Hackett. Well, the flip side of what Commissioner Johnson's saying there, and you know, I respect your perspective there, but there is there are people waiting on us to make a decision here. There are people, there are developments that are on hold, waiting for this document to come out. 
I've had legal, I've had t attorneys approach me in the elevator saying, when are we going to get this done? In our area? In, I, mean, in MP, I mean, the five mile area? Where we're yeah, in. yeah. Waiting for this specific issue to be completed. So I respect the desire to work through that, that specific issue, Commissioner Dominic, and your com issue, Commissioner Lynn, but, you know, we already waited a while to get the one caucus together. My only point is let's get this thing done yeah. and let's try to get it done in July. I mean, the next couple of weeks, I know it's kind of a holiday time, but I hope that your committee could get together and resolve these issues. It shouldn't take that that long to well, resolve well, these the issues. The issue is that, you know, we, I like to see everything redlined, which I have, but I respect your desire to see it in writing. Yeah. That, but we should be able to get it done in a couple of weeks, huh? Well, yeah, but, you know, my thing on you is the, I don't know who all this what we'll be adopting is only going to be affecting the That's beyond the five mile, five mile air area. It has nothing to do with the city of Shreveport because they've already adopted their issue. So, well, um, and I'm just saying I, that just, I think most of your area is in. I think got some people in Stonewall. It yeah. wasn't even, it wasn't even, it may not have been a constituent of mine. Right. You know, we all represent all the people in the parish. That's right. So. I mean, I'll try to meet next week if y'all can. I yeah. can. To try to get a community. Thank you. Com uh, so that's what I was just saying. Let's just postpone. Just put, 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 put a date on. Date on. Okay. Let's just postpone. Right. right. Y'all get together. I accept that. You can, and then we, we move it forward. Uh -huh. If that's okay. So with, with, yes. the, with the hopes of it being on the next. Yes. They, they can work it out. I didn't. I didn't want to lock anybody into a date. Let's lock. Let's lock. Uh, uh, turn free. Oh, you um, finished, Commissioner? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. If you move, if the motion is to postpone it indefinitely, you're going to end up having yeah. to have another motion to put it back on the agenda. So you need a date. Uh, well, well, I, I didn't perhaps I could. Perhaps the easiest thing would be to go ahead and postpone to the sixth. And then, with postpone. the understanding that at that point you may, you're likely going to be postponing it to the first right. meeting. Because this is old business, so it's only one reading. Right. Right. Yeah, it's already been introduced. It's, it's already been introduced. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's been introduced. We've had a public hearing now. Right. right. And so now this final I accept passage. that. Yeah. I, so just postpone to the sixth, with the understanding that if <laughs> the ducks don't get lined up before then, then you postpone to August. Okay. I accept that. Commissioner Mills. I was just going to make a. Uh, Friendly uh, amendment that June 29th, next Thursday, 1:30 p.m. to meet on this uh, little committee that you're talking about. Rural caucus. Yeah, the rural caucus. I can't. Well, they. Well, I think y'all gonna. I don't necessarily know that we need a motion for that, but that's well, a good suggestion that y'all go ahead and just get together and then and you change. You get at the six. You second the six. Yep. So what day do y'all want to meet? I think he seconds it. Uh, Y'all yeah, gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, what, I, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> 29 week from the day, the day's I can't make it tomorrow night. I got something for them. Let's just what start. What are we doing here? Yeah, that'd be yeah, sometime. Yeah, we have a discussion about that. Let's vote on postponing to the city. This is not the forum. Yeah, tomorrow's fine, man. Yeah, if y'all want to meet tomorrow. We'll have that in the front. We're ready to vote. I can meet tomorrow. What is this? What are we voting on? Postpone to me. Postpone to July 6th. Next, we move to ordinance number 5702 of 2017, authorizing the parish administrator to execute an easement and right-of-way agreement with AEP SWEPCO. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Milton, second by Commissioner Dominic, and we vote on the ordinance. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President, what are we voting on? Uh, voting on the uh, Ordinance for the SWEPCO E. That's correct. 5702. Right. Thank you. Yes. That passes 12 Next, we move to ordinances for introduction by title. Ordinance number 5703, declaring a certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator or a, hit or a designee to sell the parish of Caddo's tax interest in certain surplus adjudicated properties. Next, we need to ratify the minutes. Uh, Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Dominic. Please vote on the application of the full session. Uh, <coughs> Next, we move to resolutions. Resolution 58 to relocate polling place for precincts 142 and 156. So moved. Second. Moved by 
by Commissioner Dominic, second by Commissioner Milton. Please vote on resolution. Resolution 59, to authorize the Caddo Parish Administrator to consent to annexation by the Town of Blanchard, Move certain right of ways. Second. Moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Dominic. Please vote on the resolution. We have no old business. We move to new business. Confirm appointment to the Lakeview Water District. Confirm appointment. One candidate to be chosen. We have one, Mr. Bob Brown. It's two, Miss Lida Smith. Uh, Commissioner Linda Johnson. Move to appoint Bob Brown. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Linda Johnson. Second by Commissioner Dominic. Uh, please vote on the motion. On the motion. Well, doesn't oh. yeah. the way the motion made? Okay, you, 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 okay I got you. I didn't know. Appreciate it. We usually we usually take the two since it's already been moved on Monday. We put both of them on there, and then we start with the candidate one, and then we go to candidate two. So we really don't need the motion because we had. I mean, that's fine. We've already. Okay, you, you've already. Go ahead. Mr. Lynn. Okay. Mr. Brown is appointed. Uh, next we move to communiques and committee reports. Yeah, we've addressed it. And, uh, okay. We're sending you an email back for a response. To Is, are you guys going to do a protocol where same size dog has to be in the same size kennel from now well, on? Well, no. If you got a smaller dog and a bigger dog, they can go in, in, in the same kennel as long as their temperament is, is good and they get along together. Sometimes we pick up three dogs from the same address and you know there's a small dog and two big dogs and they've lived together their whole life and 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 they get along so with the amount of animals that we get there uh, we have to put some smaller dogs with bigger dogs sometimes but uh, we e normally uh, have a chance to evaluate them and uh, uh, you know stick them in the same kennel but the two dogs that you're talking about specifically was that uh, one of the dogs was tagged by rescue and one was tagged by our uh, adoption people. So both of those dogs' temperaments were good and the only kennels that we had was that one kennel. Uh, the uh, uh, June is our busiest month. You know, in the winter time, we tried to maintain that small dog, big dog thing. Uh, uh, but in the summer months, we have to do more because uh, for example, the, the month of December, we take in around 500 animals. For the month of June, we usually take in right about 1,000. So we have to make considerations unless we're euthanizing them each and every day, you know, and we try not to do that. We don't want to do that. You know okay. I mean? That makes sense, Chuck. I, yeah. I appreciate that. That's, i got to pass on okay. you what I keep on getting. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. The only other thing I keep getting questioned about is the cameras, of course. I wanted to see where we're at with the cameras. Yeah, we have, a, 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 we have the, the bids going out there, and um, uh, we've uh, set up the certain dates uh, for the bid to come back, and it's supposed to be sometime in August, I believe, that the bids are going to come back, and then we can award that bid. So it'll please June, July, August. Uh, Probably sometime in August, they'll probably start the, uh, you know, to 
install them, I wouldn't think it would take more than two weeks after they started that. But, awesome. Uh, I don't know the exact date. But That's the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. So around August. Is yeah. Okay. That's it, Chuck. I appreciate it. Okay. Sir. Um, I don't really have anything else other than uh, for the for the Lakeview Waterworks guys and the, um, the ones that wanted the, the floor and again, I don't really want to get into it, but maybe the mayor, you can address this. I appreciate you for coming down. Um, I would hope that the Lakeview citizens don't get imposed the $150 um, deposit fee and rather maybe a, a grandfathered in opportunity uh, if they move over the Blanchard water. Um, but that's not anything right and, and I, like we're, we're not we're not getting into that but i just that's what i would hope because I, I heard both sides of it and i definitely appreciate your guys coming down here and that would be the only thing i would ask is, is maybe that would be considered uh for the lakeview citizens not to get taxed a 150 dollars uh deposit when they're moving over that's it thank you for coming down there that's it thank you uh, commissioner thank you Tuesday night, uh, Mr. Bernstein and I went and met with the Veterinarians Association thing at uh, uh, Ralph Kaku's just to explain the triennial shot deal and all that stuff and get their questions answered. So I appreciate Mr. Bernstein going there over there with me. He was actually the head of the, uh, the, the discussion. He was able to answer those questions so they know what they can and cannot do as far as it goes. And maybe a few adjustments to what needs to be done on the animal ordinance as it is currently about. And thank you, Mr. Bernstein. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mayor, appreciate you coming down. Mr. Mayor, next time you come, just let us know so we don't catch you in the public comment section. So next time you come down, just get with Todd so you don't have to get in the public comment section. Appreciate you coming down. All right, thank you all. Appreciate it. So I'm just playing. Uh, Commissioner Gage Walker. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, sir. Um, I started with this first. Let me, let me first of all, let me say uh, thank you. Um, Dr. Will said for the update on the satellite locations, I'm excited to be able to help serve the citizens of Caddo Parish better. Um, it's been a request out for it for quite some time, and we know that it is de definitely to help improve the quality of life, keeping them out of inclement weather conditions, and to know that Caddo Parish is the only parish in the state of Louisiana with constituents of over 200,000 that does not have more than one early voting precinct. So just want to thank you so much for the follow-up on that. Looking forward to moving forward, um, forward with that. Um, of course, you know, I do what I do because I love people and I'm humble in serving. I always try to take things as not a personal privilege or political power when I do things. It's not selfish or vainglorious. And I always try to make sure that I'm advocating before I start to attack. I think I've been seeing some things um, that we are attacking those in our employ. And I think it's very um, common sometimes that we don't do our homework before we reach into things. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we do take those steps That's when we do that exactly because that. we are the voice for the voiceless. We are the voice for those who are employed as um, animal services, for example. Oh, you know, well. they are attacked a lot of times, but we never say thank you, right. you know, for what you do. I personally know that I can reach out to Director Wilson at any time from my cell phone and text him and tell him that there's an elderly lady who needs something to help her combat a rodent problem. And he said, I'm on it, Commissioner. And then he'll follow up most of the time with pictures, you know, say, hey, they weren't home. You know, rung the doorbell, and left it on the porch, it's there. You know, so I think that we need to be careful to realize that we're not in competition with them. But we need to also know that we're not in competition with one another around this horseshoe. That's right. You know, um, we can work so much better together. You know, not just for the good of this organization, but for the good of our community. That's my spiel on that. And with that being said, um, I want to talk about something that I've noticed on Buncom Road. Those 18 wheelers that are traveling up and down that road was, that was much need of repair for a very long time. We're headed back to the same state if we don't keep those 18 wheelers off of Buncom Road. They are using that um, Capital One Bank at Buncom at Pines Road as a truck stop. They are um, leaving their trucks there, rent cars for hours, uh, days, months and not paying attention to them. The constituents have reached out to me about that area. They're not happy to see 
you know, unmanicured lawns, the unkept building, not to even look like it's for sale, but it's just an abandoned building. I would like to know, in addition to what you already addressed, Dr. Wilson, with Rite Aid and the realtors, and what do, what do property standards plan on doing to the realtors that are in these areas? <coughs> you know, we have enough dilapidated property of homes, but to have the businesses there in major intersections, it really does look bad. So we need to take some kind of action to make sure that they're doing what they need to do. So if you would, check on that for me. Um, and as I was saying earlier about Director Wilson, um, I need you. On Baxter Street, I had an elderly couple call me out, and um, I grew up with these people in the church and the community, and it's a privilege to be able to serve them as their commissioner. When they call me over there to look at the problem that they're having with weeds that has actually taken roots in the culprits. Um, the property standards obviously has not been in this area in many years. And Mr. Glass, I would ask that um, I'll follow up with you and let's get an email to property standards uh, department head, find out what do they plan to do about this area. They have replaced their roof three times. And of course they need some help become bad rodents yeah, over there. I'll get the address to you um, so that you can take care of them. Okay. Um, but we got to do something. The cars, cars sitting there over 40 years old, and you can tell they're like literally going into the ground. It's just like a street that's just been forgotten about. So if you would, um, we'll follow up on that. And the last thing I just want to say, I think I mentioned it on Monday, about the Empowerment Summit and thanking President Johnson for bringing that Empowerment Summit to Caddo Parish and um, Mr. Hollis Conway, former Olympian. Um, he really <coughs> did a great job of empowering me and to remind us of where we came from and to remind us that we owe the community to give them. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you. We have to do with that. Uh, <laughs> report on the uh, Black Caucus Empowerment Summit. Uh, the, um, the luncheon speaker was Hollis Conway, which is a two time uh, Olympian in the high jump. He did enlighten us on you know where he basically came from and his family conditions to what he is now and to basically his children and how they're succeeding in life. Uh, it was something really to, to, to really hear. Um, I've been knowing Hollis for a long time, but I just didn't know that part of his life because when he got to school, he, he left that at home. And, and so it was like, he could turn it on, turn it off. And that didn't, that didn't affect him in school. Like some people will say, things affect kids now in school, but that didn't affect him. And he excelled uh, greatly in, in grade school and also through college. Uh, Mr. Glass, can I get you a picture? Uh, I know a little while back, um, Mr. Dumache sent a letter to the homeowners' home that burnt up in Mallard Bay, just to make sure to keep them moving to, to try to get that house torn down. Yeah. I think it's about time to send another letter because I hadn't seen too much activity over there recently. Like that one's, uh, this is what I'm thinking of. It's supposed to be coming up your meeting on, in July. Okay. Uh, the work session. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Wilson, also, can you have Charles Hennington come down uh, first meeting in August? And what I would like to um, basically talk about, we have some people that's in the Lakeview area that being taxed on sewer, the sewer board, but they don't, they don't have sewer service. Okay, so they're being taxed, but then I've been able to get the service. And I want to see how is that possible um, that these people have been taxed for so long and not being able to get service. Um, and then if they can't get the service to them, then I don't think they should be taxed upon. And where is this at, Commissioner Johnson? This is in the Lakeview area. Okay. Um, Earlier today, during our meeting, we had a lot of discussion um, 
about the Lakeview Water Board and the Lakeview area. And um, I like that we had a lot of public comments. I like when people come down to express their concerns, their issues. Um, I just wish it would be more than when it's to a point where it's a, a major change is about to happen. Um, one thing that um, I was going to talk about, but I probably won't now, but it's it's about, to me, it's about serving the constituents of District 2 and making sure that they get the best service possible um, that they can possibly get. Um, one of the, the things that I saw moving over there is that water rates were high. Um, don't have sewer because we have a wastewater treatment plant, but the water rates were high. And for years, I've been talking to them about why is it so high? Why is it so high? And, you know, being a middle person, the middle man, because you're buying water from the city of Shreveport, so then you have to put a surcharge on that in order to, to make sure that you can do the services that you need to do for the constituents in that area. You do that. Um, and then when you switch water services and the water becomes cheaper, then you should, one, reduce the, the, the charges, or if you keep them the same, where's the money going? Um, found out today from the, the mayor of Blanchett is that they basically charge Lakeview um, $3.75 per thousand gallon of water. So in that, Lakeview makes about $19 profit on each household based upon base use. Uh, and to me, the, the, the community really wasn't getting that value that they really should have. Uh, Let us went out over a year ago about lead in some of the water. And some of that is due to old lines of copper and iron pipe. And in that, they're, they're supposed to have chemical injection in the water to help offset that lead, to remove some of that lead from that line. And that chemical injection hasn't started yet. Um, I'm just, I just want to make sure that we have good, clean drinking water in the Lakeview area at a good, reasonable cost. And working with uh, the Mayor Blanchard um, and even also working with the Water Board to make sure that we don't impact those senior citizens. Because when my whole campaign basically was dealing with senior citizens and kids, uh, making sure that they're taken care of because everybody in between can fight for their own the way that I look at it. So uh, thank you today for your vote of uh, confidence of Bob Brown. And um, we're going to work to make the Lakeview area where it should be. Thanks. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I just want to echo the sentiments of Commissioner Storm and Gage Watts, where she was saying about us around the horse, you jumping around, that there are two sides to every story and things that's going on that's out there. And so um, I guess, hmm, I have to wait due to some things, but coming up soon I will release um, um, some factual bombshells on stuff that's happening and they need to be addressed and so uh, but what I will say out at the shelter no matter who it is outside persons persons volunteering anybody else we will not tolerate bullying I won't and if anybody has a problem with it they can come see me about it after the meeting thank you Um, just wanted to say a couple things about the Lakeview. Uh, the, the vote was not personal or anything. Uh, I appreciate Ms. Smith coming down. Um, there was a lot of things that were said about their day-to-day -day activities and this being said and that being said about the water district, sewer district. Uh, we don't get into the day-to-day -day activities of how you know, the water boards or the sewer boards run. We really just appoint the members. And, that was in Commissioner Lyndon Johnson's district. He had made a motion typically. Um, it's been a tradition that if a commissioner uh, desires to have someone appointed to a water district or a fire district, they make the motion and that's kind of what we uphold. If that's uh, in your district, Commissioner Johnson knows his district. If um, um, And that was the main reason for my vote to, to vote uh, for Mr. Brown. So uh, don't 
take anything personal. I think most of the people from the Lakeview is gone, have left the building, but uh, one personal, it was just simply that uh, trying to make the best decision that we have always done in the past. So uh, the second thing, um, Mr. Glass, the Ida situation with the complaint, is that being handled? Yes. In Ida, the situation with the employee that works at our dump site who oh, had a complaint yeah. concerning um, trash in his yard and everything, right. can we please get that taken care of? I haven't heard a response about whether something's he's, being done. He's so. a well, if it doesn't work, we need to get him up here in front of the, the board. I mean, we're having consistently complaints about that issue. Mr. Hopkins has the phone number for the conference call Monday at 10 a.m. If any of y'all would like that, I did ask him to send it to you as well. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Business to take care of. Business to take care of. I don't think it is. And I'll just go right in. Um, I won't be on the uh, Reform Shreveport group. Uh, meet that will have their uh, symposium or forum at 6 o'clock tonight over at um, Central Art Station. Very progressive, very forward thinking speaker, Joe Minicozzi. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, but this is something that's free, open to the public. Um, you don't have to travel to, to get the information. Uh, I think he's going to be talking about a lot of things that he has seen with how we can do smart government. Uh, be efficient with business and government and grow uh, our region, not just our city and parish, but grow our region. Uh, so if you can, get a chance to drop by and visit with me. If you can't, we understand that. Um, I see Mark has left, uh, but I do want somebody to follow up with him about that truck that is still out there um, off of I-20. They've identified it. And uh, it's up there. It's like it's like a, a ice cream truck or a food truck or whatever it is. And it's oh, got it a banner on there. And they've identified. They, I think they've notified the property owner. But at some point, you know, the truck needs to be moved and okay. it's right in front of right. the Wells and Washington billboard oh. on Twenty. Oh. <coughs> and so, um, and I'm not saying I just know that's that's where it's at. I'm not advocating. <laughs> I want anybody to go out here and say I'm pushing somebody's uh, law firm. Well, you better push mine, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but uh, at some point, you know, as folks as folks pass through here, headed to Dallas or wherever they are on the West Coast, going to West, you know, that's what they see coming past our city, and that's not the way we advertise businesses. So at some point, um, you know, uh, property standards or SPD or somebody needs to just come tow it and and send that property on the field. Uh, the other issue that I am concerned about is uh, uh, property standards. I know it's not in the city. I know we don't do it in the city limits right now, uh, but Attorney Frazier, uh, if you could, and I'll follow up with you as well, if you could, um, if we could get some legal guidance or whatever uh, based on uh, what would it take for the city and parish to sort of team up on this code enforcement. I don't know what we can do, and I'm just throwing it out for food for thought. But uh, I mean, I know we're short on staffing and stuff like that, but if we go and mow the lot or cut it down, can we send the tax bill to the property owner and have it, you know, we don't have them pay us for mowing the lot? <coughs> but there, I get too many calls. I get too many people are now just starting to just they stop you where they are and show you the actual violation. Yeah, you could get that. I know one thing that stands out in front of me and it's <coughs> actually in public right away, which is sort of embarrassing. But right there off of Juelva, the, the weeds are growing up in the median, sky high, and that's not my area. Yeah, I just happen just to be over there this week, but folks point this stuff out to me. And I, I don't ever want to tell a constituent that that's not my issue, that's the city's issue. Right. So if we could find some kind of way to, if there is a way to do it, let me first start by saying that, if there is a way to do it, let's look at that and explore what opportunities we have there because I'm a firm believer in 
uh, decent quality neighborhoods everywhere. Right. Um, I don't know about the meeting with the sheriff and the chief, uh, but I am getting calls about crime in Cherokee Park. So if somebody can send that note to them, if there's an issue with the house on Mayfair, first house on Mayfair, turn it into Cherokee Park, and I'll send the address over. But there's some drug activity going on over there. I just want to put that out there for the record. Uh, that needs to be addressed. Um, but it just seems like a lot of issues are compounded. And uh, I want to make sure that folks know that when they tell me something, I relay it and try to get it to the proper channel. Uh, Chuck, Kelvin, I appreciate the issue uh, being resolved with uh, uh, Liz Swain and the uh, homeless lady down here, if y'all could. Uh, keep, keep us apprised of what's going on with that. We'll schedule an animal service committee. Uh, I hear a lot of chatter that goes on about what's going on in animal service. Uh, it's unfortunate that there's so many sides to a story, and I don't know if you ever get to the actual right one. <laughs> uh, but I try to hear everybody out. I try to be impartial. I try not to take a side on it. Um, I encourage y'all to keep up the work that you're doing encourage the animal advocates to keep up their work but be but keep in mind that we have rules and regulations and we have to follow and that when there's an issue at that shelter the liability falls to us there you go and so um i don't know how we fix it i wish i had an answer i wish somebody up here had an answer uh, but we just it just continues to be an issue so uh, if you could keep us apprised of what's going on over there and uh, you know we'll we'll have an animal service committee meeting i think we've had one in june but i don't think we had one in june we'll have one in july i'll make sure that we do that to try to get everybody up to speed on what's going on um and that concludes my report move to adjourn the second second yeah, I'm, I'm available on the team. Uh, uh, I'm going to watch that.